This is a more than just podcast production. So, hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the More Than Just Code podcast. My name is Tim Mitra. I am in Toronto, Ontario, and I'm joined by Joe Triplinski in Boulder, Colorado. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and we're 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 doing the both both of us are doing the uh the vision pro and our personas so yeah you get to see how laggy and performant they are and <laughs> what it's like to be in a meeting <laughs> for an extended amount of time so that's cool <laughs> so i it, i think uh i wanted to sort of have a chat with joe because i know joe's pretty much a fan of the uh, apple vision pro as much as i am and i think that um, there's been a lot of press about it. And for me as a developer, obviously it's a, it's a necessary platform to be on. Um, but I, I, I'm really enjoying, I probably am on it every day since I've had it. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the opportunity to work on a couple of projects before it was launched, which was great. And then I also went to the developer lab. Actually, that's the question I have for you, Joe. Did you, did you go to any of the developer labs at all? No, actually, um, I didn't have an opportunity at all all summer. I was busy doing contract work for other stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, nobody uh, who was paying me had me, had me doing anything <laughs> vision related. Yeah. And uh, so, much to the chagrin of the team here, there's a couple. Uh, yeah, a lot of the software for Vision, uh, parts of it anyway, were uh, developed here in Boulder. Uh, some oh, some nice. of those folks come out to some of our gatherings and whatnot, and they kept saying, "Have you gone to a lab? Have you tried this? Have you done this yet? Have you played with the simulator?" Uh, and I I felt terrible. I had no chance to work on it at all. Uh, but since I've gotten it, uh, I have actually been playing around uh, quite a bit uh, with with a couple of app ideas now that I, that I have it. Uh, but I didn't know I didn't do any of the labs. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's interesting you mentioned Boulder because I had I had been I did it. I was applying for jobs um, at Apple whenever I saw Vision Pro come up. Um, from my story was obviously, and people have probably heard this before, but uh, I was laid off in August, and I had I had booked the the Vision Pro. Um, session the very one of the very first ones in in cupertino at the end of august and um uh but for three or four days before that i got laid off and then so you know said to carol what should i do and she said go like this is this is to, you know obviously go see what it is and who knows and i mean she's in, all in on it as well she hasn't even put it on yet which that's how that's how much she believes in did sort of my hype right um <laughs> You know, and some of my family members have tried it. My my granddaughter tried it the other day. She had a great time with it, and my uh, stepson Jonathan's tried it as well. Uh, he was on the show on More Just Code last week talking about it. Right, we did a crossover with Spotcast, but um, yeah, and so I, I I went down with a skeptical frame of mind. Right, you know, let's go see what it is. Is, is it going to be janky? Like, I mean, the Newton required a bit of. It was a bit janky. It required a little bit of patience you know the original watch needed a little bit of patience you know the ipad was pretty good out of the gate um but and thankfully we can copy and paste on the vision pro i'm really thankful for that because that was one of the problems with the iphone for the first two or three iterations i think right um yeah yeah but yeah i mean like you know for me like i i the story i tell is i had done a painting in university of of like these cubes flowing in space sort of a very sort of sci-fi book covery kind of thing right and because i was playing a lot with geom- geometry and isometric shapes and stuff like that and drafting techniques and and um so when i was thinking about what am i going to test when i go to the lab because you've got to bring your code you don't there's not you know you can download you could download some of the um the stuff from WWC we found at the time, but when we got there, but, um, you know, so I made a couple of POC apps, right. To try out, right. Proof of concept apps. And, uh, one of them was, I just made these cubes in, in reality composer pro and colored them the same way I had in the painting. And, you know, I just, when I, I that was the, the come to Jesus moment for me. When I, when I saw that those cubes floating in front of me in the room, that was like, I just like mind blown, you know, um, I had also prepared a shark that was like swimming around me, around my desk, like a seven foot, you know, hammerhead shark, you know, and it was just phenomenal to, to see it, you know, doing that kind of thing. Right. So, so how did, so can tell me, tell me how your sort of experience with the, with the device went. I was going to ask you about your ordering process. Did you, did you order it and do a mail order thing or did you plan to go to an Apple store and pick it up? Yeah, so um, typical 
you know, Apple, they did the whole thing where I think at my time it was like six o'clock in the morning, which wasn't so bad this time around. It wasn't like a 3 a.m. Oh, wake up yeah. call. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the very first day ordering thing, uh, I did that online. And, um, you know, they, they had warned us that we were going to need to be able to scan our faces with our phones, that we're going to be able to do this other stuff. Um, but uh, it was actually a really smooth process. I was surprised. I mean, obviously, compared to iPhones, it's probably like one one hundredth of the number of people <laughs> trying to order at once. Yeah. Um, so the face scan went well. I did all that. And I did set it to pick up at the store, though. I wanted to go into the store to pick it up. Um, there's this store like five minutes from here, so it was super easy for me to go to. And I find that going to the store first thing in the morning, especially if I can get a first uh, morning appointment. It's quicker than waiting around for the UPS truck all day long <laughs> or FedEx or whoever they're using now. Um, so yeah, I wanted to grab it right away. And that turned out to be cool because when I went in, uh, so, like I said, some of the folks he here who work at Apple on this stuff, they got excited and they actually showed up at the store and they were like, nice. you know, saying hi to people as they came in to pick it up. And, um, you know, they were all excited to have me uh, go in and, and get it, which was really cool. So do you know, do you know Harlan from Apple? Yeah, oh, Harlan's okay. one of the guys. Uh, yeah, who definitely uh, was here, um, showed up, and they they were very anxious to see you know me try it on. <laughs> He's been super helpful with. Uh, there's a group of us on Vision OS on a Slack channel that we all partake in, and and uh, he's been super helpful with you know sort of tips and tricks and things like that. Because I mean, the, the challenge for working on this, I was writing tutorials on how to do it, how to use it. I just finished. Um, the next uh the, the beyond the basics um using reality kit and reality composer pro section which comes out in march um but while i was writing i was like trying to figure out where this stuff was it felt, felt very much like early ipad development days where documentation mm -hmm. was scarce you pretty much had apple's documentation and then these you know the, the very politically correct can i say it that way um apple demos from wwdc and of course the code changed between the uh, releases we were working on you know in october or november from what like i had to go and fix a couple of tutorials to get them to work um <laughs> yeah because the, the obviously things change in beta right but um yeah so he's been super helpful but so for me though so i my experience was obviously being canadian um i did i did look at buying one uh, on day one but i hadn't really negotiated with with my life partner carol about how we're going to pay for this thing um <laughs> uh, you know yeah. she's a partner of my company and that kind of stuff right so um i I looked at it, I went, you know, had it all lined up. I wanted to see what the ordering process was because we were concerned about what it was going to be like for people from international countries. But I saw that Paul Hudson had tweeted that he was coming to New York to pick one up. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, if he was able to order one, then maybe, maybe it's not that challenging. Um, I was surprised that the Apple Store app let me scan my face, even though I was using a Canadian account, right? Um, right. I, my challenge is I still don't have my corrective inserts as we record um, February 20, what is it, 27th? 26th can't even see my watch 26th i think right um mm -hmm. oh 27th um because they're stuck in customs right so oh. <laughs> i had to make i had to make an appointment to go to to uh um a lens crafter at I, and I had to go to Rochester. I couldn't get an appointment in Buffalo because there's an Apple store in Buffalo. Um, but they kept suggesting I go to Syracuse or, uh, and you know, this, this side of the world, that's every, every time you make a change is like another hour onto your drive, uh, in terms of stores. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely. So, um, I managed to, to so I mean, she, you know, she said, what we, she agreed I could, I should, she agreed again that I should get one. Right. Like, like no questions. It was no, no question in her mind at all, which is great. So, um, I ordered it probably I, by the time I ordered it, I best deal I could get was like a Sunday at, you know, three o'clock. I wanted to get three o'clock in the afternoon because I knew I was driving down three hour drive. Didn't want to get stuck at the border coming in. So I couldn't do a morning appointment. Right. Um, as it turned out, we got, we breezed through customs and we got to Rochester by 11 a.m. or to the mall at 11 a.m. Right. And, um, so my, my grandson came, came with me because he can drive. And uh, so we, we booked an appointment for him and myself to try it. And the reason why I'm asking about the light seal, though, is because there's been a lot of bad press about the light seal. And, um, and every, time I, every time I measure my face, it comes back with 33W, right? Which is, and I, I'm not sure what the number, they were talking about on, on Accidental Ted podcast the other day, the numbers have some sort of secret meaning. It's not like a right. number that's a measurement. W, w, I guess, is wide or whatever. But... Um, yeah. When I was at the lab, I I noticed that like right in the center of my vision, I could see like a little yellow bit of haze, right? And and uh, I never really noticed that. And when I was toes in the Apple Store, and I put my fingers on the sides of my temples, 
that disappeared, mm -hmm. right? Because every time I measure my face, I get the same measurement, right? And uh, that's the seal that I had ordered. And thankfully, I spent like 90 minutes with the folks at the Apple store because I said, like, you know, they had me, they had, one of the people had gone down to Cupertino, Cupertino and been trained. So she spent the time with me going through different, um, light seals to get the right one for my face. And it ended up, I ended up getting a much narrower one than, than was like a much more curved, scopey. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the other tricks she said about scanning your face is to put your elbow on the table in front of you so your hand doesn't shake when you're scanning your face, right? <laughs> Right. You know, so I mean, <laughs> right, right. I mean, kudos to Apple for making this super, you know, easy uh, to to order. But I mean, maybe there's, you know, I I think if people are ordering, I was concerned if you were ordering like, you know, by by mail, which I know a lot of people did. Um, mm -hmm. Are you getting the right seal for yourself? And you know, um, yeah. Oh, that's why when, uh, when I got there to pick it up, you know, I, they would have let me just pick it up and walk out of the store. No, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. It, they they highly recommend that I do at least a fitting, and not, if not a full tour. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to do the full tour because I just want to go home and play with this thing, right? Uh, but I said I will. I, I said, yeah, absolutely. I want you to fit it and make sure that this, you know, that the light seal was correct. Um, and so, yeah, similar situation, uh, but a different outcome. Uh, basically, we scanned my face in the store, uh, and we found a different size than what I had scanned, you know, the night that, that I was doing. I'm like, well, maybe my face was puffy or something because it was six in the morning. I don't know. Uh, so he was about to give me a different seal, but then uh, the other guy came over, and he's just like, I just want to verify, you know, why this is different and blah, blah, blah. And the guy said, well, he's got, he's going to have corrective lenses. I do have my lenses in here. And he, and he said that does make a difference with the measurements so you know let's stick with let's stick with his original uh fitting and you know you can always come back and and you know we'll swap it out later and i'm like okay uh and we did that and it turned out fine now i don't have any problems with the sides um but what i get is the, that little bit of light leak in here with my nose um just a teeny little bit and only in certain lighting conditions um and i kind of immediately forget about it it's like if i'm in a really bright room i can notice it uh but then that goes away um and with the uh, the corrective lenses, I find there's a little bit more reflection. Like there, I think there's something reflecting off the screen and then into the corrective lens <laughs> that does a, it gives it a little bit of a kind of a almost like a one of those um, you know Star Trek you know effects that the, uh, the who's the JJ uh, Abrams kind of a oh you get, you know, get the, the lens flare bokeh kind of thing happens oh, it's just lens tiny flare. tiny little bit of lens flare um, and it's just like the teeniest little bit once in a while and it's that only seems to happen when it's really dark which yeah. I think is because I guess it's black in there plus the a bright light coming off the screen um, but yeah all those little artifacts I I tend to not notice the same thing like I've, a lot of people have been complaining about the the uh, peripheral vision being cut off right. and that your your field of view is kind of narrow like I would never even and thought to say anything about that until so would I. someone brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of funny to me. Like I'm like, yeah, I, I was. I'm just shocked at how good everything looks, and most importantly, that I don't get sick from it. Like, because every other VR headset I've ever tried, within 15 minutes, I'm nauseous as all get out. Uh, and this one, I wear it. You know, same as you. Like pretty much every day, and anywhere from four to six, sometimes eight hours in a day. Uh, and it doesn't bother me that way at all. Like I know I'm looking at video. I know it doesn't look like perfect reality but like within five minutes i forget that and i'm just looking at my content you know well, and doing I mean, my work yeah there's a couple well, i want to go back to the glare thing because because like, i i'm not yeah. using the lenses right now and i see the glare too especially when i'm watching a movie at night so so there is mm -hmm. there is something that i keep wiping the lenses thinking like you know i also wear glasses and i think you do too right so yeah, and when you got yeah. smuts on your glass it really drives you crazy right so <laughs> totally uh, especially if I'm if I, like, especially when I go to see a, a movie in the theater and I got to wear those, you know, 3D glasses and stuff like that. I really don't like having glare on my on my glasses because I'm there. I'm there to, to be entertained, right? I want to don't want anything in my way, right? And totally. I mean, that's I got to say, we'll we'll get to the 3D videos in, in a bit, but watching 3D videos on this thing is phenomenal, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the the, the the lens glare. I've also noticed that when it's really if it's really bright room and it, especially when it's first booting up and everything's black inside because we're not really looking at um i'm not i'm looking at you but i'm not really looking at you right kind of thing right i've got you know i'm looking at the right. i'm looking at the mac screen you know mirrored on my vision pro on a couple mm -hmm. of else you know oled screens that are like 
centimeters away from my face, you know, not even a <laughs> centimeter away from my face. Like they're just like, they're like the, I do these pancake lenses. They're really, really scooped. Right. But yep. it's amazing. There's no distortion and all that kind of stuff. Like even with my, my eyeglasses, there's distortion. So to be honest with you, I'm not wearing contacts and I'm not wearing my eyeglasses. And this is like what my vision used to be like before I needed lens, before I needed glasses. Everything's a bit blurry because I still need my corrective lenses. Don't get me wrong. But now, like I said, they're stuck in customs, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. Um, so, so coming back, what I was saying was I went down to Lens I should finish that story. I went back to Lens Crafters, got a prescription, you know, so it's an American prescription, sent that off to Apple. And, oh, actually, I do have a follow-up follow up item here, actually, because I was talking about uh, lenses on the last episode. And uh, so there was an issue with my lenses. I couldn't upload the prescription for some strange reason. And it turned out that when I went to the store and they changed my light seal, they changed my order right oh so they canceled right. the avp i had bought and they put in a new one with the right seal because i guess for some inventory reasons or whatever even though this i was still getting the same serial number uh apple vision pro that i bought the light seal was different right and that broke the order that broke the connection between my zeiss order and this vision pro which i have in my possession right so i, I finally called apple afterwards and and um the dude kind of went, yeah, maybe, maybe the issue is this. And he went and so we canceled, he, he, I placed a new order and then he canceled the old, the second part of the order, right? Because I had ordered, I also ordered the case, a nice, you know, the, the Apple Vision Pro case with it, right? So, um, once I got straight away, so, so I've been able to submit my prescription, but then, then I had them shipped to my friend in, in San Jose, who then shipped them to me and then FedEx hit the border and they went, what is this? <laughs> right and then right. They medical device crossing yeah. the border yeah, yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's optical lenses i mean you know and, and it's 140 dollars. like so i should pay I'm, I'm willing to pay the 200 dollars it works out to in canadian you know tax mm -hmm. right retail sales tax i mean that's another thing i had to pay new york state tax as well as canadian tax when i crossed the border so all in like my my order was pretty expensive in canadian dollars by the time everything was said and done yeah. but yeah it's still but coming back to like the vision, I mean, this, that's the phenomenal thing about this. I have, I use corrective, I did do the demo at Apple, at the Apple store, but I'd also used it previously when I went to the lab, right? And and at the lab, we went through the whole thing with, with the lenses as well. And it was like better than wearing glasses, better than, you know, it was what my vision used <laughs> to be like before, which is what I love about this device, right? right. Um, but coming back to what you said about, like, you know, using it for four or five hours, one of the talking points I have with you is... Um, I'll be in the basement, you know, in the evening because the dogs are all sleeping and, you know, I've got time to myself and I'll open a bunch of windows and, you know, I'll get up and go to the bathroom and I'm actually like dodging the windows. Like they seem so right. realistic. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. The first time I walked through my email, I was like, oh, wait up. I, I thought I couldn't do it. And then I just like, wait, up. no, idiot, you can walk through this. And I did. And it still felt weird. Yeah. 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 So, in, you know, you open and then the weirdest thing is like, like for when you've been wearing it for a few hours, you, you take it off and the windows are gone and you're like oh the windows are gone yeah, that moment momentary there. sadness you know <laughs> but, uh, yeah like, well, the other thing i love is that when you walk past the window and you turn around you could still see the the close button and the yeah. move, uh, you know so you could you can close a window from behind it which is actually pretty brilliant that they have you done the multi-store thing or have you gone multi-floor thing or have you gone like are you is your house got multiple floors or a backyard or something yeah, no, no. I, I pretty much kept it all, uh, you know, at any given time, I'm usually on one so, vertical plane. <laughs> so I, I open, I, I'm, off, I'm in the basement right now and I've got my windows open and I'll go upstairs to make a coffee. So I'm like probably 12, 13 feet away, but upstairs. And if I look, I can look through the floor and see the windows. Like, <laughs> or if I leave one in the, I, I left one in the backyard for fun once just to sort of see, you know, I can see through the concrete, the brick wall of my house to, and it's cool because you just grab the bar at the bottom and it snaps right in front of you, right? So it's yeah, pretty trippy. Yeah. Like it's a trippy, trippy um, work environment, as it were, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that little trick of like just tapping right on the bottom, uh, you know, thing, and it'll just, especially if you've turned, sometimes I'm sitting and I'll just like shift my angle a little bit. And if I just press that, it'll tilt the window right to my, you know, yeah. to be flat to me. Um, I, I find myself constantly like tweaking around the windows, especially my big Mac window when I'm connected to my Mac. Like, a, it, and I find that it's just, it, to me, it's like the ultimate monitor plus stand that could be adjusted infinitely 
in a way that no monitor stand has ever been able to be exactly right for me. Like I can get it closer to myself, I can get it further away when I want it, I can move it, you know, and resize it as needed. If I'm working on some really big detail work, I can zoom into it. And um, yeah, to me, it's just instantaneously like. I want to get rid of any like external monitors I've ever had, and <laughs> like, and and you know the real beauty of it is now I'm like I'm going to be going to visit my dad next week. I'm going to Philly, and oh, yeah. my entire setup now is going to come with me. Right, I don't have I'm not going to be just on a laptop screen where I'm used to being on this big monitor. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm going to have exactly what I have no matter where I go. <laughs> you know, um, and so I, I really like that aspect of it and the the productivity side of it. I mean, I barely play. I played a little bit of Fruit Ninja, and yeah, that's fun. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the other games are cool, but everyone keeps telling me I should try more of them. <laughs> but for me, it's been 100% just working. Like, my Mac now runs Xcode and the Adobe Suite, and that's basically it. Everything else is just vision windows, you know, with my email and my Slack and all those other apps are just running in compatibility mode or natively. Uh, and yeah, now my Mac has really become this single <laughs> force that just does the work that I need to do right, and nothing yeah. else. I mean, that's um, one thing I, I do miss, though, is I, I actually have, well, mind you, my MacBook Air can only support one one monitor because that's just, just the nature of the chip, right? But when right. I had, uh, before, the, when I had the job computer, I could run two or three compu- monitors off of it, right? So I, I do miss that. But I, I normally have my iPad sitting here beside me and my Mac sits up here in a stand and I've got a big 27-inch monitor in front of me. But I mean, right now I'm looking at a 40, what, a 4K display because I've got this virtual window open in front of me, right? So... Um, yeah, and then you know I'll put my mail over here, and I'll put Safari over there, and I'll put the App Store up here, and I'll put the. I'm watching the dog sleep in the kitchen over here right now. You know, the <laughs> other dog is on the couch. You know, so like <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Um, I'm curious though. So, so you mentioned so you're you're primarily working as a designer using using um, Creative Cloud. You said right, but have you have you tried any of the Adobe apps on Vision Pro, like Fresco or anything like that? Yeah, no, you know, I know that uh, they are they have Photoshop and Illustrator and all those things for iPad, and I have played with them a little bit, but I've never, I haven't tried them on Vision yet. Uh, right. Have you launched them in, like, compatibility mode that they run? Yeah, well, it's not so much compatibility mode. I'm, I'm talking about, this. it's basically the iPad app, right? Like, if it runs right, on an right. iPad, generally speaking, unless they've unchecked it, um, like a few, I was disappointed when I first started using this thing, like one password, for example, wasn't seemed to, didn't seem to be available. But they've made it available since, because to me, the first app I put on any device is <laughs> one password, you know, because like I'm lost without that right now. So, uh, and, uh, so that's, that's, that's cool. Um, what, what has your experience been like with the apps that are out there? I mean, like there's a, a one of my picks is a, is a, a, a directory of, of apps that are available, which I just got like this, today at lunch and I found a terminal um, app called La Terminal, okay. um, <laughs> which basically, and I logged into, I SSH'd into my Mac, and I'm like, I've died and gone to heaven. I can, I, every <laughs> single, I mean, I've been, a, I've been using Unix since like 2000 something or 1999, I think. So anywhere I can have a terminal on any hardware is great. Right. <laughs> uh, it's cool. I didn't know there had been like terminals yet. I definitely should do that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. What do you think about the apps that are available on the store as of like we're what two weeks in I think three weeks in yeah i I mean there's a decent you know selection of of native apps out there um I think the the developers who are doing it best are the ones that aren't trying too hard to make it like this is a vision app and so I'm gonna make everything three d and I'm gonna right. like you know that works great for a game, but like if you look at something as simple as fantastic how like mm-hmm. the implementation of it is perfect I mean it really just comes across really and it, I think they recently uh, released card hop as well their contacts app and it's just it's just fantastic Al, but in a native window right and, and sure that would have run fine on the iPad I mean Apple even didn't even do their calendar <laughs> app and it runs fine as the iPad app mm-hmm. um but it's just so much better to have it all in the native, uh, you know, look and feel and style. Uh, and then you could, you know, start doing things like talking, you know, speaking into search bars and, and things of that nature. So like setting appointments and things get, you know, does it's really easy with your voice. It's easy on the iPad as well. But um, yeah, so for me, apps like that, like, and I was surprised when I went. I had been playing around with this little app. I'm doing this kind of, uh, it's kind of like a cocktail recipe journal for like an amateur mixologist like me so it's like somebody likes likes to make drinks at home but like wants to write down their own formulas instead of using all the classic Mm -hmm. formulas all the time um and i was building that for ipad uh and i an iphone and i have a mac version going and i'm like oh well you know let me try a vision version see how hard this would be uh and compared to taking an ipad app and making and this is all swift ui by the way it's like brand new i was 17 only kind of thing yeah um as far as like 
what you need to do to make it work well on a Mac is still a lot more work than getting it to work in Vision, <laughs> right? So Vision is like the, the, way more of the API just comes straight across from iOS. And so, yes, there are certainly things you want to consider, uh, lots of things with hovering targets and, and things of that nature. Sometimes like a modal doesn't make any sense, just open a new window, that sort of thing. Um, but in general, like I don't see any big reason other than the market, which is obviously not huge yet. Uh, I don't see any barrier to entry in terms of getting your existing iOS apps onto Vision natively, uh, unless you're doing a lot of really custom UI or unless you're doing an app that really does require a lot of 3D. Uh, and, and therefore, you're going to want to do a lot of design rethinking. But if you have an app that's basically a productivity app, um, there's really no reason not to bring it to Vision, if, especially if you've been, you know, if it's a rather recent app and you're, you're not talking about like an Objective-C runtime kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so yeah, I mean, I find that the native apps are really good, the ones that are there. Um, and and uh, I just want to see more of them over time, obviously. And I keep checking in to see, like, okay, who's who's converted this week or who's added a new thing, you know, this week. Um, so I, as much as I think there's going to be a lot of cool, new, interesting Vision apps that only work on Vision and, and only make sense on this platform, I do also think that your standard type of, like I keep saying, like if, if Apple makes me Xcode or whatever they want to call it, Playgrounds, you know, if they can make that, like I can make all my apps, like forget storyboards, I don't need them anymore. Uh, <laughs> SwiftUI only version of Xcode called whatever you want to call it uh, on Vision, then I probably at that point would probably... Uh, and if I, and if the um, Adobe apps work well enough through the iPad, um, I probably would not really need my Mac much more, hmm. which surprises the hell out of me. I mean, I've been using a Mac since 1986, and the iPad never came close to replacing my Mac. I never wanted it to, um, to be clear. But to me, Vision could easily do that, like with a, with an external mouse and, and trackpad. Uh, but, so do so that you mean because you, because you can use the but you're still using your Mac as as an input device like you're still using your mac you're still having a mac window happening on your vision pro right but only because i need xcode or because i need the adobe suite that's basically what's right. stopping me from <laughs> from just doing the exact same thing with an external keyboard and trackpad yeah the only thing like if i if i could have multiple monitors i think like i was just i just finished mm -hmm. writing uh, the course for Codeco again and um the actual the the scripts and stuff like that are in, are the markdowns written i do that in visual studio code and um i haven't um I would take the th I would take the device off to do that because it was just a little easier to to do actual writing that way because mm. um, I could have my Mac open on my Mac monitor doing one thing and then an external monitor with the Vision Studio Code on it and do something else and uh, that was the only time I really kind of took off this device but yeah like even even during writing the the course I would have the I would put the thing on I would obviously run parts of the code and do builds and stuff like that um, it's written for people with who just have don't have a device they can write with the simulator mm -hmm. or whatever, but, um, right. but yeah, I was still, you know, still had the, the virtual screen going and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, that's cool. I want to ask you, so one of the other things that, that they went on a bit, uh, on <laughs> accidental attack podcast or ATP, uh, was about the sort of fit, the weight. And like, I see you're using mm -hmm. the, the, the solo loop like I am, um, right. I think solo knit loop is called, right. I did yeah. use the, I did use the, um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the double the one, but right, it, yeah, yeah. The, um, God, I can't talk about the other straps I've tried, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I'm sure they'll come back. I'm sure something will come up with that. But um, the um, and and one pro tip I learned was if I wear if I put a baseball hat baseball hat on, it's actually a lot more comfortable because it spreads the weight out mm, with the solo knit. But I've, I've been using I'm liking the solo knit. So there's a bit of pressure on my face, but um, if I yeah. I remember correctly, are you 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 were, you were a hockey player at one point, right? No, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish I can't skate to worth a worth a damn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, so I have so, a lefty though, so I do have a I have an edge there. But uh, I played a little bit of hockey in, in, in you know early uh, grammar school, but I was never very good. Well, I was a goaltender, right? So my oh, whole God. career as a hockey player, I've always had something on my face, right? right. <laughs> and as far as it, and like you said, like if somebody hadn't pointed out to me what FOV was, field of view, I would not not have even thought of this as as an issue. But now that they've pointed it out, yeah, I do notice that I have to turn my head for to look at the dog walking up the stairs a minute ago, right? But, right. um, but so I've always, I, I maybe it's cause I've always been used to playing hockey with the same limited field, field of view and, and something heavy on my head that it's never, I never really think about it. I'm always wearing a hat. Right. So there's always right. something going on. Um, 
So I don't know. Uh, did, well, you were talking about your nose earlier too, and and so you can see my nose barely like makes an impact on the thing because it's relatively small, I guess, right? But and I've seen right. some pretty interesting honkers on people, right? So because <laughs> that is the one thing there there is there is a bit of metal just in front of in front of your nose, and I noticed at one point I was wearing it kind of funny, and I was getting like a ridge on the top of my nose. So I right. guess that could, that's the only thing I think that that could be a challenge for some people would be the the proboscis that they've got in front of their face right but but and in and just so for people who don't know there's a piece of fabric that sits over top of your nose right um so the, the seal actually goes to like here on your chin and then our cheeks and then to where the dogs are wrestling i guess oh, i have a camera i can watch them wrestle oh, cool <laughs> anyway but um <laughs> So yeah. how, but how, no, are you, I, I, how are you finding yeah. the weight of the device or the, or the face tightness or whatever? How do you yeah, what I've been, you doing? What I've been telling people is that this is a Polish head, and Polish people have the biggest heads on the planet. So, like, my neck has been holding this thing up for my whole life. And so, right. <laughs> like, oh. adding a, a, couple, a couple of grams to it is not going to make a difference to me. Um, I also think, I think if, you, if you're one of those tendency, like a lot of us uh, computer nerds who do this, you know, our neck is kind of like leaning in towards the laptop. Uh, mm -hmm. Now your head is kind of suspended over, <laughs> you know, midair instead of over your shoulders where it should be. Uh, and so you're going to feel that more if, you, if you're down here all the time anyway. Um, I can see how some people complain about it. And, and you know, obviously, if, if it could be lighter, sure, I'll take it. Um, but it doesn't, that isn't, yeah, I'm with you. Like, all I feel is a little bit of the heat on the cheeks because you know, the device does get a little warm. Mm -hmm. uh, and so after, I'll notice it mostly after I take it off that like, oh, my cheeks are a little flush, <laughs> you know. Um, but as far as this band, and then the other trick that the guy in the Apple store taught me was basically if you're feeling the weight down here on your cheeks, push down towards, right. towards the weight. And if you're feeling the weight up top on your head, then push it up away from it. So basically, you go in the direction of the, the heavy weight, and it should rebalance itself. Um, yeah. And so every once in a while, I'll do one of those little adjustments. Um, but other than that, yeah, it doesn't bug me the way other people... Again, it really depends... Uh, you know, we can make fun of people for having weak necks or whatever, but I think it's, I think it really is a personal thing and it depends on exactly, you know, like I said, where your head usually sits. If it's usually kind of hanging over your body, that's going to be a bigger problem for you than and maybe for others. Um, it's actually a great inspiration for me to actually put my neck where it belongs. I've been, been getting told by Alexander teachers my whole life that I should be doing this, you know, not totally back, but like, you know what I mean? Like better than where it is. Um, and I find because I'm using my laptop, I'm not looking down at my laptop anymore. I, I put my screen up here. So I'm actually not doing this as much as I would have uh, ordinarily thanks to this thing. So I don't know. Maybe it'll inspire better posture in people long term. <laughs> but I also think in a couple of years, we're going to see this thing be like half the weight. Uh, and that'll make a big difference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, already, I'm already like, you know... Um, as much as I want to be on the, the, the bleeding edge with it, I'm, I'm already regretting the fact that there's going to be a better version of it coming out soon, right? <laughs> like somebody I said, yeah, I wouldn't bank on it soon. I would say it's probably going to be at least a couple of years before we yeah, see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, mean, this has been, this has been, you know, uh, what, 10 years at least in development? Like, I think yeah, the patent yeah. was 2007, somewhere in there, right? So. Yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, I, I'm amazed at the drawings that I've seen from, from back then. But then what else, what are you going to do, right? So, I mean, from a technology yeah. point of view, I think the Apple waited for the right moment yeah. when all that, all the technology converged to the point where they could make this thing the way it is. But, um, but I mean, like, you know, uh, I, I get really frustrated. I like, I go, I'm a cinephile, so I go to movies in the theaters all the time. And um, last night, I, I, by the way, if you're, in, if you're interested, Dune right now is four ninety nine on the app store. Uh, I was going to rent it last night cause we're going to go see it on, we have tickets to see it on Sunday. Right. And uh, I was going to, I was going to watch it again. So I figured out I'm, I'm using my American account right now, which is everything I'm buying on, on Apple pro right. Or Apple vision pro right now is a throwaway for me because when it does come okay. to Canada, I'll switch to my Canadian account and then I can't, you know, anything I buy, Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, he, it's, it's all the next in, product that they make with unregulated lasers. Yeah, yeah, it's an investment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that is that what it is? Okay, yeah. Because yeah, it's I'm funny. pretty sure it's the it's the lasers. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Because you know, it's funny. I had a um, I had I had opened an account for my iPad when I, when the iPad iPad first came out, and there was the same. I just went back and I wonder if this account still works and logged back in and sure enough you know it still had a you know all the financial information was still there i'm like okay cool this is i'll just use this account right so <laughs> um but anyway yeah. so i was watching dune last night dune part one um 
And it, 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 it's such a silly thing. Like, you know, like I love me, I'm loving the Disney stuff because all the Disney movies that can be in 3D are in 3D. Hang on, my dog wants to get up. You can get up on the couch. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Have a puppy. <laughs> Dorsha. I can't reach you from there. You got, you, you're, I'm all tethered. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, she'll just have to suffer. Um, yeah, so I was watching Zoom la- Zoom Dune last night, and um, yeah, and and just not having to put on those goofy 3D glasses. And yeah. oh, I was going to yeah. say, it asks you when you when you first started, do you want to watch it in 2D or 3D? I'm like, you have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? That would have been a relevant question. I think uh, you know, as far as going to the movie theaters, I always choose the 2D option because I really I find. It's like wearing sunglasses in a movie theater, like 3D movies in the theater. I never got it. I never saw, I never thought, I certainly never thought it was worth paying more for. And I'm not cheap, but like it just was, and I would get a headache from just the 3D glasses. But I, same thing, like the first thing I wanted to try was Dune because I'm like, all right, they have that in 3D mm. sold. <laughs> and I put that on and I watched it. I'm like, this is what 3D is supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> like 100%. All, all this time, like I finally see what the director saw in it. And I, I'm like, it's subtle. It's not like overdone. It's not like the, ooh, like pokey in the eye stuff. Uh, it's just, a nice field of view um and it's yeah it just makes the whole 3d experience so much now i'm like greedy i'm like looking at it, I go why why only the hobbit why not the other th- movies in 3d <laughs> like they haven't like converted a lot oh, of the really? other oh. like lord of the rings aren't in the 3d yet and um a couple other things it? in my library did you try the marvel stuff like the all the i watched yeah, that no, game and yeah disney's got a lot of stuff available which is great yeah um uh, I, I was uh on a plane recently already. Uh, and yeah, I watched Dune and I watched uh, the first Wonder Woman was available. A couple others that are out there already, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, Disney's got a good selection of 3D movies already. Uh, a lot of the Pixar movies are 3D already too, which is nice. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll have to go back. So I haven't got my Apple TV app working yet other than this, this one uh, movie I bought. But um, cause I don't, I don't want to... Sp- I mean, I might spend a few bucks to turn Apple because I have I have Apple one premier on my mm-hmm. Canadian account right but so but I can't share this US right. account with it right so <laughs> <laughs> it's that whole CRTC you know cross border rights and stuff like that right but yeah. um but my Disney app does work, so I've got the I've got the Canadian I've logged in with the Canadian account. So I want to ask you, so since you have the Disney app on your device, um, when I go to the menu, I used to see a 3D menu at the bottom, like you know, on the ornaments on the side. Mm-hmm. There used to be like a little 3D icon, and I can go there, and it would give me a short list of what movies were in 3D. That's gone for me on Disney. Oh, I is don't it? see that anymore. I'm gonna look real quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I I didn't notice it disappearing, but you know, I wasn't paying that much attention. I'm I'm launching Disney right now. Um, they even do like their launch screen in 3D now. Oh yeah, I, I saw a 3D there. You don't have it? Yeah, the little, the little icon. Yeah, I don't have that yeah, anymore. Little, that's interesting. I wonder why it's gone from the Canadian version. Well, but it's not supposed to work in Canada yet, right? right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, who knows? Uh, yeah, untested uh, setup there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought that was a nice little shortcut to get to just the, the 3D content, which I thought was great. Um, yeah, that's a. Movies in general, like especially on the airplane, it's transformative. Like I forgot I was on a plane a couple of times last wow. time because I just put myself in. Now, you know, when they're serving drinks or whatever, I, I get out of the – like it's interesting. We can have a whole discussion on the whole environments thing. But yeah, I think that. the brilliant part of environments is that Apple lets you dial them in and out as you know as needed. Like if I'm in a coffee shop, I kind of don't want to be fully immersed because I want to see the people around me. I want to be socially aware. I want to make sure that I'm like not – disturbing anybody um i also don't you know someone wants to run by and grab something off of, <laughs> off of my tabletop you know yeah. i want to be able to yeah. see that um but yeah so being able to dial that in and out is really amazing and and even if something as simple as like taking a drink like people on the pl- i think the person sitting next to me on the plane because this is like two days after it came out i was already flying with it and uh <laughs> you know i i, I just went to my tray table i picked up my water and i took a drink and there and I, I think she looked at me like oh i didn't know you could see like your glass you know like i'm like yeah i could see everything until i dial that out you know when i want to right. uh and even when i'm on my mac i'll, I'll do the environment just up to where my keyboard is because even though i can touch type without my keyboard like i still need to see it for some of those you know f keys and you know, every the occasional uh key that i can't quite find i want to be able to see my keyboard um so yeah i love being able to dial those in and out i think that's a really brilliant move um and it's cool that disney provided a few of their own and then uh I, my favorite one is in the apple tv app you just have a theater <laughs> it's just like you're yeah. in an empty theater um the Max app didn't do as good. As, I think they did one. It's like the Game of Thrones throne room, and it's like kind of like not done 
to that detail. Oh, Max. Okay, went, yeah, yeah. That went through. Yeah, the Max app is it's okay, uh, but it's just it looks like a 3D environment instead of you actually sitting there like you you know in the the Marvel ones or whatever in in the in the, uh, the the Star Wars one in, in Disney is pretty realistic and pretty amazing. Yeah, the Tatooine um, Speedrunner and yeah, the, yeah. The, the Disney Theater. So the so yeah. the Max app. So so are are you getting 3D content through Max? There, um, I don't think there are any. I've just been watching some TV shows through there. I don't think there's any 3D there yet. Hmm. Um, but yeah, they do offer that one environment. I, I imagine they'll add more over time. Um, but you can also always just dial in and sit and watch a movie in Mount Hood or <laughs> you know one of the other <laughs> standard locations, and you just have this giant screen over the lake. Um, you know. Well, it's interesting to, you, the thing about the watching a movie because I noticed even with the with the Apple Vision one, I mean, I used to go to this one theater downtown which had amazing sound. It, they they mm-hmm. tore it down, but um, I would we'd, your eye light would be your eye line would be right at the top of the screen, so you're just looking down like you know naturally mm-hmm. at the whole screen. It was a phenomenal seat. So if you depending on where you like to sit in the theater when you're watching on on the TV app, you can choose to be on the floor. On the balcony, front row, back row, or in the middle, right? I, te- I prefer bank balcony in the middle because yeah, then the, the 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 screen is like not up here. I'm looking at it down here, so mm-hmm. which to me is much more comfortable, right? So um, that's I mean that's pretty cool. I, I I love I love the fact that you can or you could just not have the environment on and put the win- the movie window wherever you want, which is really cool. I mean, it's hard yeah. to explain to people who haven't tried it, but it is, I think it's pretty flexible in that sense. And, and, um, well, I mean, let's, let's talk about that. So price wise, do you think mm-hmm. like, so some, some, um, critics have said this is a dev kit. Some critics mm-hmm. have said, you know, this is not, it doesn't, or they're comparing it to the quest or whatever, which I think is a completely waste of time. Cause I'll never even try those. Right. right. Um, I'm not like, right. a, like you, I'm not really a gamer. So there's no point in my even trying that stuff. But what do you think about the price of this thing versus what you're getting with it in terms of, like you said, monitors and, and experience and, and portability? Yeah. I think in terms of, um, I think it, it's an extremely personal thing. Um, I, I, if it's me, you know, to me, it's already paid for itself because I can sell my monitors. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, I, I get the I get the whole thing about the price. I really do. If you're looking at it as this like the best way to watch a three or the only way, as far as I'm concerned, to watch a 3D movie, yeah, I probably wouldn't have spent this much money just to watch 3D movies. I mean, I love 3D movies. You know what I mean? Now, um, but I wouldn't have done it just for the airplane or you know. And I know that's how people use their iPads, and it's like I get why you're not buying a new iPad Pro regularly because you don't use it for things that, like, that are that meaningful. Um, and so, yeah, if it's an entertainment-only kind of device, unless you're really into the gaming side of it and the 3D side of it, you know, I'm sure there's people who can justify the price there. Um, but I think the, the main people who are not or thinking this is way too much money are the ones who are thinking that's all they're going to use it for. And for me, I'm using it six to eight hours a day with my Mac to do work. And I'm getting paid to do that work. And I've already got one client who's saying, hey, I, I want to head in this direction. It looks like this is going to be an important thing. Um, so it's going to, like, to me, that's like a no-brainer, right? And if you think about price-wise, like, in 1986, my Mac SE was, you know, inflation-adjusted dollars was a lot more than this. Right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, but that's the thing. People don't see this as a Mac. They see this as a toy or, or as something that they're just playing with or, or uh, entertaining themselves with. And the entertainment, to me, is all a bonus, Um I was doing fine on an airplane with my iPad, but this is like just that much better. Um, <laughs> well, do you fly a lot? That, yeah, I tend to fly eight or nine times a year at least. Um, okay. So, you know, for me, that's, you know, it's the best way to like kill time while I'm sitting in that terrible, way too small seat <laughs> <you> and coach. <laughs> so That's true. Um, and I can never, I'm not, I'm too big to even to use a Mac on a plane in coach because I just can't, like the person in front of me leans back and that's it. I can't even open my laptop yeah, screen, you know? Same. Um, so I could put a, a keyboard and trackpad down and actually work with this in front of me if I wanted to, but I tend to want to just, I don't even get the Wi Fi on planes. I just like to, that's the one time I'm like unplugged. <laughs> right. right. Um, but, you know, just what what I was saying earlier about how I can take my entire office now, like everything, like the, I'm no, I'm in no way compromised when I go to my dad's house for, you know, six or seven days next week um, and hang out with him. I don't have to worry about me having limited uh, ability to do the work the way I like. I can do my workflow exactly how I do it at home. Uh, and for someone like me, that's extremely important because I've, I've been working from home for decades. Uh, and I <laughs> I don't know about you, but like the longer I spend in, in this office, you know, the more I want to just like at least once a day hop into a car, go to a cafe, get a coffee and just work there, you know, uh, and I can bring that whole office with me. Um, 
And yeah, I'm, I, I am that weird guy too, using it in the coffee shop. Uh, I wasn't at first, but the yeah, the, the Boulder people, the, the Apple people here convinced me that no, no, you should try it because they weren't allowed to. They were using like, you know, prototype devices for the longest time. So they weren't allowed to show them in public. Um, but yeah, it's like I find that like pretty much like everything else here in Boulder, people just ignore you and you're, just, you're the weird guy with the with the goggles on your head. And <laughs> no, they, they don't really think anything different. I've, um, yeah. I've had one or two people stop me and say like, you know, what is that? Or what, how do you like it? That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, not as much as I would have thought. And, and it's not as, you know, I, I haven't had anyone ask me like, hey, can I try it? Because <laughs> you know? it's like, that's the, that's the one weird thing about this. It's like Apple, like I get it. It's a very personal device and it's not easy to share. Uh, the mm-hmm. guest mode thing is interesting, but it's so much work for them to like actually do the calibrations and everything else that it's like, it takes too long. And they're and again, at that point, what are they looking at? They're looking at my photos. You know, they're, they're looking at whatever apps I allow them to see. And it's still yeah. my personal data. So it's it's not ideal for sharing it. I, I just tell people, go to the app store they'll, they'll be happy to let you play with it um but i haven't had too much of that like and it's in so for me i don't know to me it's it's well worth the price and i didn't even think twice about it now it did end up being like you said more than i was expecting because you know you gotta add the lenses and i did buy the case and then like i got a spare battery too because i do not like yeah, being me tethered too. to anything and like where i at my living room especially like there's just no plug anywhere near where i would be sitting and so i would i would have to have like a long extension cord and i'm so afraid of tripping over stuff it's like no, no, no not worth it um so I just have two batteries, and so if they were hot swappable, that would be cool. But if they're, you know, since they're not, it's not a big deal to just shut it down, swap the battery, put it back on. Um, and then one battery is always charging while the other one is working. So I don't know. I don't feel like battery life is that big a deal at this stage either um, with the two batteries. Uh, but again, that that all adds up. So <clears throat> to get back to your original question, is it worth it? Absolutely for me. Um, uh, you yeah, know, now my friends know I would I would have found a way to justify it regardless. <laughs> It's just because I always want to have the new cool thing. Uh, but I'm actually excited that it already is, it's become such an integral part of my uh, productivity life uh, that it's like I don't have any worries about that anymore. At, at first, I thought, okay, when I, I'm going to connect it to my Mac and it's going to be flaky or it'll be blurry or I won't be able to see it right and I won't want to use it. And like within a week, I'll just like it'll sit in a shelf or, or you know what I mean? I'll just use it for movies. Um, you know, that was a real possibility, but yeah. I don't think that's going to happen at this point. Like, I'm really into just working this way now. Yeah, I mean, there there is a, the, there's, there's a slight amount of an isolation, but, you know, because I got the puppy right now, we have a, a four-month-old puppy, so she's constantly needs, you know, you've got to be watching what she's eating and chewing, and she's trying to eat the house. I call, call her the house inspector, because if, if there's a cable out of place, she'll find it, right? And she'll chew it. <laughs> But I mean, right. that's why I bought, I bought a second battery because to, because I figured the puppy's going to at some point attack the device. She hasn't gone yeah. near it yet so far, which is great. You know, I think that's it's great. different if you have cats. Cats tend to be a bit more, uh, they don't like change. And so they, they tend to go and investigate things more. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm probably, I bought an extra light. I bought a light seal for Carol to, to try. Thankfully, it fits my grandson. He, he's, his face scanned the same way, which is great. So mm-hmm. um I don't feel like, I mean, they're still mint in box. So, I mean, if, if I want, I can right. sell them at any point in time too, right? <laughs> but, right. <laughs> um, especially, I mean, especially since you can't, if you had to buy a battery in Canada right now, you can't, right? And I, I happen to have one. So, right. um, in the box. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I think there's, the one side of it is it's kind of a necessary expense for me. And I mean, when the, when the M1, or the, it wasn't an M1, but when the, when the Apple Silicon Mini um, developer kit was available, you know, shelled out the money for that. Mm-hmm. Um, turned out that when when we had to return those, we we thought it was going to be a seven hundred dollar investment. We would not see any return on other than being ahead of the game. Um, they gave us a credit back for like six hundred bucks. So I ended up using that to buy my first M1 Air, right? Which right. I'm talking to you on now, right? So. Um, so that was that was cool, but um, yeah, I you know I don't regret buying it, and I have been sharing it with people. I'm, I just tell mm-hmm. them just don't send any email from my email account when you're in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, so I think I think probably because I did the the demo at the Apple Store, I know what Apple runs them through. So they t- they open up the you know they they show them photos. They, I have some spatial photos I took of my dog. Um, I show them that you know um, there's a Alicia Keys demo in the in the in the TV app. There's an Alicia Keys demo. There's a the, I don't know if you've seen the rhinoceros one. I haven't but, watched that one. I watched the oh man. One. 
when yeah. you be prepared when you watch that one those rhinos come right up to the camera like it's scary <laughs> how close they are that's great right? cool. and of course they also run you through that uh, explore dinosaur one that's the one i always i always start people with that one and then you know hold your finger up and right. the tricky part with guest mode though is when if like what i do is i stream it to my ipad so i can see what they're looking at right yeah. until they decide to play copyrighted material because then you can't the, the screen just goes black on the ipad also goes screen on the black black screen for the person trying to watch it because you have to teach them how to you know do that trick where you look up to get your control panel and turn right. off the video mirroring because then they can watch the copyrighted content right that's right. the only right. annoying thing about guest mode um <laughs> I, I had a friend of mine try it the other day and uh we ended up getting he ended up getting out of guest mode so he had to enter my pin code to right. you know the, the six digit code to open the to unlock the thing and he couldn't figure out how to like tap or <laughs> who's doing this and right so right. i guess there there are you know some where people tend to like look at the thing and they hold their finger up in front of it and click right but right. you don't right. have to do that your hands down at your side will will click just fine right so yeah i mean the other yeah, thing too of, that i've heard a lot of people complain about the typing and like for me it's like don't try to tap the buttons like just look at them and like i can move my eyes pretty fast and just like click 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 and you know i've gotten pretty good at it I, i'm still not good at, at an iphone keyboard because you know the the autocorrect still does crazy oh, wacky yeah, stuff for me it's right insane. so it's, it's frustrating yeah. still to type obviously well but. thankfully this is a new version of siri right? right because a lot of times when i'll when i want to do something i'll just get the i'll look at the little microphone in the in the window and i'll just say what i want to say yeah Right. And, and it doesn't get it hundred percent right off the bat, but when it, I think it does go out to the sky, to the cloud and correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said this. So, and it comes back and it does correct it. But so it is a bit, a bit laggy that way, but you can, you can dictate to the thing pretty, pretty well. I mean, like it's yeah. phenomenal that way. So, I mean, overall I, I'm saddened by the negative, negative reviews I've been hearing about the device because my experience yeah. with it is positive. I mean, yeah. I've worked with some pretty janky stuff from Apple over the years, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I call, I called it the best 1.0 they've ever shipped and uh, I, oh, I stand sure. by that. You know, there are definitely some quirks and I've had a few little uh, dropouts and other issues, but for the most part, um, it's been rock solid and all the complaints people have had for years about the iPad, not you know being able to do multitasking and not being able to do this and not like all that is solved on, on the, you know, on, on vision already. Yeah. Like the OS, obviously things like rearranging your home screen icons, that'll come, you know, <laughs> like give, give them a minute, you know, um, and th things like, um, you know, remembering, like, I, I can imagine how hard it would be. Like, I, I, you know, on a Mac, you got a 2D right windowing interface. And, yeah, it'll remember where your window was next time you launch the app, if the app was written properly. <laughs> but, you know, Vision doesn't have that sense. Like, you launch something yeah. and it just shows up. Like, like so if they could get the Windows to remember where they were last time, 100%. and I, I would take it the next step, like, make geofence that so like when i'm in the living room or when i'm in or you know I, I guess geofence wouldn't be enough like inside you'd need like something like just do a quick scan of the room and it's like oh okay it's this room put the windows here <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, oh, yeah we're in this room now we're in this coffee shop put the windows here um that would be amazing uh and then let me just bring up a whole like graphical thing of of my different window arrangements sort of like uh you know the the spaces concept on on the Mac, and just let me choose one. You know, um, stuff like that will come. You know, those kinds of like advanced windowing techniques and things will will happen over time. Uh, but already, like I feel like I could be super productive. And I don't know what it is. I think for certain people, just spatially being able to put things in certain places and have them mm -hmm. there. Like I find my email is so much less distracting when it's just sitting over here on my left, and I have to I have to physically turn my head to see it. So right. it's it's not sitting side by side with my Xcode. Or popping yeah. up in front of you all the time right? right right exactly yeah they're not the windows aren't now you can have windows on top of windows on top of windows if you want to but you, you know drive yourself nuts uh but so, you know once you arrange them into a nice neat fashion um you know to me it's it's already ahead of the game there in terms of what you can do on it compared to ios you know it already has a files app it already has you know so many of the things that ios was missing uh when when ipad os copy and out. paste yeah <laughs> <laughs> And seamless integration with my other devices. So if I copy something on my phone, you know, it's available to me. You know, those kinds of things, like all that work they did on continuity now makes so much more sense. Like as soon as my Mac's connected to the vision, now I can control all my vision apps with my trackpad, you know, and, and I don't have to worry about typing anymore because I just type on my keyboard. Um, yeah. A lot of that's like, I, I, 
you take for granted like how much work goes into stuff like that. Um, how much work went into just something as simple as depth. Like when they, when you're zooming that window out, it stays readable, which means they're adjusting font sizes as you go further and further away. Uh, they're doing other kinds of tweaks to the system behind the scenes, and it looks looks like it's not a lot, but until you realize what's going on under the hood. Um, and again, that's classic Apple fashion, right? They're they're hiding the complexity um, of it. And my kitchen is my kitchen is a ten foot cube, for example, right? So when I open up Windows, it fill they fill that ten foot cube, right? But I was right. at a photo studio the other day, which is like fifty feet by fifty feet by you know thirty feet high, and the windows were filling, the, and they were like so like I've been looking at like a billboard sized window with my email on it, you know, like. <laughs> Like it, it yeah. messes with your head in that sense, right? In the same same sense that you were talking, you know, we were talking about walking through your email the other day, right? Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, and you can, and that's the other thing is you actually can touch the windows. Like if you're close enough to them, and you can yeah. scroll with your finger, you could do all the regular, you know, yeah, as you can, if you can pull it in close, and it'll it'll tilt down like as if it's an iPad, and yeah. you can scroll, scrub with your finger, and type, and I mean, so yeah, so like even even when the pin code thing opens up, you can just poke at it with your finger, right, and yeah. and hit the keys, so. There's a lot of, I mean, I, my experience with it over the last six months, it has improved a lot, believe it or not. But, you know, yeah. from what I, what I re- remember about the first couple of times I tried it to where we, where it was when it shipped to 1.0, um, and I hear 1.1 is, is again, that much better, right? So right. I have a lot of, a lot of hope in this thing, but I think, you know, um, I, I, I don't know, if it, it's amazing, like, it does, there's no learning curve, right? I mean, there's yeah. like a, maybe, maybe a half an hour learning curve, but once you get going with it and you realize, hey, I can do this, you know, now I'm already thinking of sort of the power user things. Like, yeah, Joe, I do want to have a Windows one in front of the other, but I want a way to flip through them. Like, where's my, where's my <laughs> right. alt tab and my command tab, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More gestures with my fingers. I, still don't, I have no idea where my Zoom window went. I closed it a, a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's in front of me because my my avatar is looking forward. But right, <laughs> my, right. And every time I, yeah. every time I shake my head, just for the people at home, every time I shake my head, my there's a message comes up saying that this microphone is too close to my face. Yeah, I'm getting that too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all it's, it's, the show we're getting this like you know thing yeah. popping up in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Minor things like that, right? So, and yeah. like notifications, they appear like a little icon that floats above you, and you can just totally ignore it. Like, yeah, yeah. There's so many, so many uh, cool things, edge casey things that they thought about. That it's a minor inconvenience. Most of the things that people complain about, I think, right? So, yeah. Another interesting thing about the that I didn't mention uh, in any of my writings or, or talking to other people about this, but it's the first. OS Apple ever built that doesn't have a clock that's facing you 24 hours a day, right? There's no, <laughs> like, t- like the time is in the control center. You can go get it at any time, but like, where would you put it, right? And I know I've noticed there's a whole bunch of apps out there just like, oh, put your clock, you know, in your face if you want. And that's great if you want it, but like, I'm glad it's not there in a lot of ways. Like when I'm on my Mac, I could see it on my Mac menu bar, but it almost makes me want to take the clock off my Mac menu bar because <laughs> it's kind of freeing to not have the time in my face all the time. Do you know... Um, I, I think it was like the, I think around 2000 or so, maybe around in then that, that time period, I stopped wearing a watch altogether because, mm-hmm. you know, I had a cell phone. I had like, you know, I had, I was, I was an IT manager. So I was always available to everybody. And I was constantly looking at the clock and like, you know, my living my life from nine to five, like when going to go home kind of thing. Right. And, right. and, uh, I just, I just stopped wearing a watch because I found that just having time in your face all day long was com- like, it was, I was losing, you know, the mindfulness thing like i was spending spending too much time paying attention to what time it was and it wasn't until the apple watch came out that i actually started wearing a watch again right and again because the apple watch added more than just adding time it was notifications and you could quickly glance remember glances that the concept yeah. they first came out with you <laughs> yeah, could glance yeah. at your email message and decide whether you wanted to actually open your app and which is to what you're saying is kind of that's kind of cool is like uh, it's not it's in your it's literally on your face but it's not in your face yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and that's what i mean like i you know when the the rumors of this thing came out like i i had, like i said i had tried other vr headsets and it was like never an interesting category to me at all it wasn't something i thought yeah. i'd want to do because i always thought it was pretty much for games and that's fine but like not yeah. a thing i do regularly plus every time i try one i get sick so i was like okay this is just a you know so then i hear apple's gonna do this thing and i'm like well i hope they solve x y and z and i hope that the biggest z problem was uh you know Motor make sickness. it useful to me yeah. <laughs> you know make it something i actually want um and then there was you know the people who think oh well apple's just going to make them into like just regular eyeglasses eventually and 
now that I'm using this, I realize like there's things they won't be able to like this world of putting this and and being able to do environments and all that stuff. You can't do that with glasses, right? Glasses. Uh, I'll tell you, I I have a hundred percent the answer to that, right? But before yeah. we get to there, I want to I want to just talk about the sickness thing because because I did read somewhere that Apple is doing something where they're they're flickering something in your eye that's counteracting the motion sickness. Huh. Uh, yeah, so there is, they have they've yeah. they've thought about that too. So here's where I think this is going, and this is this is why I'm all in on Vision OS, and this is why I'm, I'm out there proselytizing. Get involved in Vision OS, start writing apps for Vision OS, and I've got a couple of courses on Codeco. Paul Hudson's coming out with something. All the people out there are coming out with something on this. It's definitely something you're going to get involved in. And, and to circle back on what you said earlier, it, I found it a lot easier to write the Vision OS version of my app than it was the Mac version, definitely, which still is not on the app store because i there's a couple oh, thumbs up there's a couple of things i still I, I haven't got into the whole you know <laughs> i forgot those are there <laughs> does that even work it's not doing it now yeah but anyway um uh i, I envision so so think about it this way they've they've come up with an operating system that can put imagery in front of your face right right so in the future you know, you'll send your kid at eight years old into the hospital. They'll put a chip behind their ear with an augment that will allow these images to be pro projected into their brain. All right. Because think about it, right? W you and I are perceiving these windows. They're not really there. Right. Right. We're, we're perceiving, pre uh, perceiving this sound that's surrounding us. We're perceiving all, you know, this, we can touch things and they tactilely, they well, don't talk how they move, but they move. They respond to your touch and right. your finger motions and stuff like that, right? So I don't see why this can't... It doesn't have to be any kind of device you put on your head. It could be something you put in your head. Yeah. Uh, and right. I think, I mean, as much as I'm sure there's a bunch of people who are like scared out of their minds of that, even that notion, I think if there's one company that could pull that off, it's Apple because uh, yeah, obviously we've, we've heard from Zuckerberg that he's working on something with that, with controlling these things with your brain. And we know what Elon right. Musk is up to. And he's like, doing are you really going to give, are, yeah, are you really going to give your brain to either one of those guys? <laughs> like, no. Right. But like, you know, like, and that's why I think this building a trust thing is so important uh, for Apple and why privacy and all that stuff. It's like, it's more than just marketing to them it's like their entire future is going to bank on that you're right in a lot of ways like our our brain I, how did jeff hawkins put it your brain is just sitting in a black box it doesn't see the world mm -hmm. at all right it's mm -hmm. our senses that give information to the brain so that your brain's experience of the world is literally in a dark room 24 7 and that's sort of what we're doing with these is we're replacing our vision you know that that sensory with what they're projecting through this thing um, right. and so yeah why wouldn't you just replace or augment what's already coming through my eyes with something else that then puts the thing in front of you, like not literally, but in your head. Um, interesting. I mean, that's way, way out. Um, yeah. Even, even the eyeglass thing, though, I can see that being like a, a different version of this where it is just windows in front of me. Like what I've always visioned is like me walking around with glasses on like normal. Uh, and like I walk up to a store and I could just see it's hours, <laughs> you know, like they're mm -hmm. open or they're closing in two, in 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Or like, you know, what's, what's the menu? I could just grab the menu, you know what I mean? Or at a, the, the ultimate thing, when you're at a conference, like everybody's name just pops up over their heads. <laughs> so I don't have to ask people their names that I forgot 16 times. Um, little things like that. But like, you'd never be able to do like the Haleakala, you know, full on immersive, whatever with eyeglasses, because you can't, you could see, you could see the real world around it. Um, but you're right, that brain implant, I hadn't thought about that. That's that's scary, but that will probably happen in our lifetimes. <laughs> well, I mean, it goes back to my university days, because I was very into perception at the time. and Because, I mean, I was studying fine art, right? And what is what is art? Art is just representing the world to you through pictures or theater or music or, you know, whatever, dance, right? right. Um, and... You know, like as you as you study hi the history of art, they just they're trying to perfect the craft to the point where photography came out and killed, you know, realistic paintings or realism, right? But right. and surrealism, surrealism was like taking dream states and putting them onto paintings, and you get Marguerites and, and Dalis and stuff like that. And you know, you're now you're seeing a world that didn't exist until that person put that paint on the canvas, right? But that's essentially the same thing. Like like I'm you and I are having a conversation. You're in Boulder, I'm in Toronto, you know. I'm looking at you, or am I? Right. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> and I'm looking at two versions of Joe. I mean, we should talk about the personas too, but I'm looking at your persona. I'm looking at your, your actual face with the, the display on, and you're just looking at the same thing with me, hopefully, right? But right. Um, 
Yeah, it's. It, I always joke when perception is nine tenths of the law, right? Like, in <laughs> in so many different ways. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. where I think that's the future I see. Like, it's not so much the Ready Player One where you put on the haptic suit and you're. Did you see the Disney floor that when you walk, if you turn. You walk, and as you as you walk, it the rollers move underneath you, but you physically don't move anywhere in the world. Interesting. No. And then you that. turn ninety degrees, and the, they start rolling that way. Oh wow! So Disney already has a virtual. So you could put on the Vision Pro, and you could start walking around Mount Hood, and Apple could project you through the the virtual environment, but you're physically not moving. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the same this is, this is the Ready Player One thing, right? So yeah, and your um, brain wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, yeah, and then the hip, the whole idea of the haptic feedback on your body, or the haptic suit is that you know you feel warm and cold and whatever, yeah. right? And you're you're talking to people who aren't even in the same space with you physically, right? right. So we're already there. I mean, we, we're you know we've gone from making transatlantic telephone calls <laughs> to <laughs> right to now we're having a chat on with a goofy headset on, right? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. And I think the goofy factor is it, obviously that's going to be the subject of Saturday Night Live jokes and, you know, for the next 10 years. But like, it doesn't matter because over time, it's just like the AirPods, it's just like everything else. Like, it, it'll become normalized um, mm -hmm. to an extent. Uh, and particularly, like I said, this thing is, is big. It's not just ski goggles, but like, it's also like physically off your face in front of you. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. Apple made it look about as cool as you can make it, but it's still not going to be cool for a while. <laughs> But yeah, it, well, it'd be interesting to see. Like, I joked around. I, I took a, I put my goalie helmet on, my goalie mask on, and I, and I, you know, imagined what it would like be like with this on instead of a cage, right? Right. I mean, that works. Or you could have like a construction helmet, or that's the dog making that noise. Yeah, um, like the full-on Daft Punk helmet. Yeah, I mean, you could totally, yeah, you could totally, yeah, like, or motorcycle helmet or something yeah. like that, right? Like, there's lots of different ways they could have dealt with this, but yeah, is that really necessary? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> <laughs> say hi. Oh wow, it's a big pup. But oh, she's four four months old. She's twenty, almost thirty pounds wow. already. Yeah, pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> but she's the reason why you get Apple Care for your Vision Pro. <laughs> yes, yes. Not uh, yeah, totally not. It's like a no brainer. <laughs> I saw Did the repair the, cost for one breakage. Yeah. I'm like, yep, Apple Care. <laughs> No, I mean, already people are, are talking about uh, having a crack in the front uh, thing. Yeah, and I, I can see that being a manufacturer's thing where they'll replace it under warranty. But, yeah, that looks weird. I'm oh, really, yeah. It. yeah. It looks to me like that wasn't dropped because that's like a very fine, like, perfect split down the middle that looks more like, you know, like it was too hot when they molded the, the plastic or something. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be hot and cold and yeah. running in and out of... Mind you, I, my, I haven't really, t other than taking it to meetings to meet people, mm -hmm. um, I haven't really done, I haven't done, I'm not brave enough to do the coffee shop thing. I'm going to see the Leafs <laughs> game tonight and kind of like somebody joked, they should wear it in the stands and <laughs> <laughs> just for the notoriety. But I've got my, got my fake one here. Like I've got my, you know, <laughs> yep. I could put that on. <laughs> yeah. But cool. All right. Well, um, so uh, we normally have picks on the show. Have you got any yep. any apps or anything you'd like to call out? That, yeah. Uh, one, one app that a friend of mine uh, pointed me to that I didn't realize existed uh, or it's new um, is uh, it's called Television <laughs> or Sandwich Vision oh, or something really? like that. Uh, I think it's actually called the Television app, but it's made by Lonely Sandwich. If you don't know who Lonely Sandwich is, he's that guy in the commercial you've probably seen. Yeah, it's just called Television. Sorry, I'm looking at it now. Um, and uh, you've probably seen him in, in commercial. If you ever like the Studio Need guy, he does the narrations. He's like that really like deadpan guy. He's a really nice guy. I've actually met him. Uh, he's got an app called Television, and basically it lets you choose from like thirty or forty different like old timey TV sets or like flat screens or like other types of configurations of televisions, and then it projects the video into that TV. So you could do like a Max Headroom type thing where you, you play a video and like stick it inside a television and just stick it in the corner of your room. It's kind of like a novelty fun thing. Oh yeah, uh, I did see that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be adding the ability to stream Netflix on it and other things, uh, you know, Hulu and things like that, which would make it even more powerful, I would think, because then he could, uh, you know, in theory, that app could then replace the theater environments that they have in certain apps, uh, oh. and if, especially since Netflix famously is not available natively. Um, if they could figure out a way to stream Netflix, that'd be pretty cool, um, given that Netflix has made the decision not to even to make their iPad app available. Um, but. <laughs> You know, so I, I thought it was cool. It was like a novelty. It was a neat idea. It was like this cool combination. I, I know I talked earlier about like not trying to make everything about 3D, but I thought that was a neat novelty kind of way of, of playing around with the 3D concept. And it's relatively, it's like a one-time purchase kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, they, they plan on adding things to it over time. So I thought that was a cool pick. 
Cool. All right. Well, I, I, I have two follow-up things, which I didn't talk about at the top of the ch- show here, but two fact-check things. I talked about um, AppleCare Plus, and I had mentioned that in the past, I think this may be a change with AppleCare Plus, but generally speaking, whenever I bought anything with AppleCare, like if I bought a, an iPad and a Magic Keyboard and a Pencil, right, those would all be covered under the... Mm. the the iPad, iPad Pro Apple Care, but so I was talking to Apple the other day, and uh, my Apple Care Plus for my AVP, which technically doesn't work in Canada, by the way. I mean the the support program right. says right in the fine print uh, does not cover the lenses or the case that I bought on the same invoice. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah so that's good yeah, to know. I mean. Yeah, it is what it is. And the yeah. dinosaur experience, <laughs> the dinosaur experience that I talked about last time, which is an amazing demo, is actually by John Favreau, uh, oh. you know, from ILM yeah. and Pixar and stuff, right? So, yeah. which is cool. But my pick this week is Vision Vision dot Directory, which is a listing of all of the cool. This is where you're going to go next time, Joe. Cool uh, is a listing of all of the apps that are available on the App Store, and they feature some. The reason I know about this because they featured my app, which is a job searching app or tool to help you with your job search um and it works on ios ipad and vision pro and nice. um yeah vision vision dot directory and uh lo- and the television app that joe mentioned there that's where i found the la the la terminal mm-hmm. or la terminal um I, yeah the minute i logged into my uh my Mac from my Vision Pro, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, <laughs> this is awesome because it's it's so much easier to uh, to navigate than like finding these apps in, in the App Store. Yeah, the know. App Stores, they still have a search problem in the App Store. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is cool. This is more apps than I even knew was available. So, and I figured that I figured there had to be a ton of little int, uh, indie apps that were getting hidden by the App Store algorithm, <laughs> algorithms. So, uh, this yeah, really I'm cool. surprised. Like they used to, they still have. I think they still have the top ten apps lists on on the other app stores. But they don't seem to have one on the Vision Pro Vision. store. Yeah. Kind of weird. It's weird. I know that's something you used to talk about on on uh, release notes when you guys were doing your show back in the day. Was how bad <laughs> yeah. the app search was. <laughs> yeah. I so mean, that pick was for you. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm I'm totally going to use this and find some more more native apps. That's cool. Cool. All right. Well, Joe. So if people want to get in touch with you. Where would they find you? I can find me. That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> at a coffee just, shop in Boulder. Look for yeah, the guy with the goofy helmet. <laughs> go look for the. Like, I look for the weirdo at the bo- coffee shop in Boulder. But uh, yeah, I'm like I'm not really on social much anymore. I am on Mastodon, but uh, I forget what my link even is. I think it's just. Joe Chaplinski sure. or Jay Chaplinski probably yeah. uh, at Mastodon dot social, um, and uh, you know you can always find me at Joe dot design is probably the easiest way to find my website because uh, it's technically Joe Chaplinski dot com but I had to redirect it because who the hell knows how to spell my name right okay <laughs> so Joe C design <laughs> yeah Joe C dot design yeah oh dot design okay cool all right well my name is Timitra T I M M I T R A on the Twitter machine the Mastodon machine. All the things, app, Insta, Insta, Instagram, all that stuff. But I am, I should probably say that I'm going to be doing the keynote talk at um, a conference in Beijing uh, on March 30th and 31st. So, nice. um, provided nothing happens between now and then. And uh, also, you can see me <laughs> on uh, uh, the new, the Beyond the Basics uh, Reality Kit Pro and Reality, Reality Composer Pro and Reality Kit uh, tutorials on Codeco. Those are for subscri- subscribers only, but I don't mm-hmm. know if they'll make... I think they're talking about making the introduction one or part of it free, but um, so yeah, there you go. That's that's what I've been, doing, been up to. So, cool. Nice. And so until next time, we'll see you in the future. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of the More Than Just Code podcast. If you want to find out more about the show, you can visit the More Than Just Code website at mtjc.fm. There you can find a summary and show notes of each episode. We list links to the apps, code, and news that we mentioned on the show. If you like the podcast, tell your friends. Please leave a comment on the website, and if you can, please write a review on iTunes. And please recommend us in your favorite podcatcher. All of these things help others find out about the show. We really appreciate your help with spreading the word. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. So use the hashtag AskMTJC. Once again, the podcast Twitter account is at MTJC underscore podcast. Please consider supporting the show by pledging any amount on patreon.com slash MTJC. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time. Cool.
The only, my only complaint about my, well, I don't, it's not a complaint, but I mean, I have an overbite, right? That's mm-hmm. something I've been living with my whole life, but my, my, uh, persona doesn't have an overbite. <laughs> <laughs> my, my teeth will come together. Like no matter what I do, they're always yeah. like spaced. Yeah. Like there's like my bo- upper and bottom. Have, like, have you tried this one? Like you can touch your fingers mm-hmm. and they can't seem to get the last two to come together. Look at that. See? Oh yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I can't even begin to imagine how hard some of this stuff is, but yeah, that's weird. Well, and the word, the thing, what I don't understand is maybe there's an app for this, but like, why can't people, this is toilet, <laughs> you know, I can't do thank you. Cause as soon as you put your hand near your face, oh, yeah, near the face, it just like wipes it out, which is right. Kind of and then, uh, what else? I, this is Wednesday. Apparently like I, there's a girl I follow on threads who every day she comes out and does a word of the day. Oh, cool. You know, so thank you for doing that. Um, but <laughs> Yeah, you can't but, say yeah, that. So I've been learning, but it, 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 it would be really cool, like, if you could do ASL. Well, the other thing I should probably talk about as a pick, sort of a pseudo pick, is um, Paul Hudson did an app, like a theremin app. Oh, that sounds it's cool. It's called uh, Something Symphony. It's on the list there. But okay. And you, you basically, you with with your left hand, you you change the uh, the volume. Right. And then on your right hand, you change the pitch. So if you do this, you know, you get this weird sort of... Right. Stuff but, happening. But it's in like the a app, real right? theremin. I mean, that's kind of cool. It's a very neat idea. Obviously, uh, makes perfect sense <laughs> from well, a musical instrument standpoint. And, yeah, there's a default mode. There's a theremin mode. Then there's some rate. And then if you go pro, there's all kinds of other synthesis that he's put in there, which is cool. I mean, I've you know, when 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 I discovered music on my Mac, um, I didn't play guitar for about three years because I just constantly played with janky eight bit, you know, <laughs> right. sixteen bit audio back in the day. Right, so. Some music apps or something I've always been fascinated with. Yeah. Yeah. I think about what Jordan Rudis has done on the iPad with his synthesis oh. apps. Like, uh, yeah, I could see him getting a vision and going crazy with <laughs> having yeah. like these, yeah. these 3D keyboards and stuff. And <laughs> yeah, to see him at a Dream Theater concert with the big, with the headphones on, you know, <laughs> with the helmet on and a wizard hat. Yeah. Or doing, doing a solo. I think I saw him do a solo one on, on an iPhone once. Like he just had an iPhone sitting on top of his keyboard and, you know, yeah. they cut to him and the camera's on the iPhone and he's doing like this with his fingers and yeah. This it's craziness totally, coming out of the speakers, right? Totally wild, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not phenomenal. Anyway, I got to I got to go take care of a few things, but okay. thank you for coming on the show. This has been a lot of fun. I'm not sure what one of our vision vi- visages is going to show up on the. Maybe all four. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Right. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Okay. Thanks yeah. for coming out.